Hello everybody, welcome to module three. Um, already on module three, wow. Um, you know, we're, we're really getting through this. So for module three, we're focusing on uh, developing and evaluating assessments. So, you know, assessments are huge and making sure that, you know, we know what the, the students are knowing uh, what we want them to know and um and that you know everything is kind of trucking along okay and so you know to do this you know we, we, you've unpacked standards so you know what your desired uh desired results are based on what those standards are and so that should lead you into really you know saying what what you should put in an assessment tool um also, you have your essential questions. So that is, you know, b b between the standards and your essential questions, that should really drive what what you are doing to assess. So, um, you know, with with uh, the example that I've been using uh, previously, with you know the periodic table uh, standard, you know, the students need to be able to predict. Uh, what's what's happening with uh, or predict the properties of of an element based on the outermost uh, electrons and so I'm going to be asking students in my assessment in the summative assessment to predict um, now that prediction is going to be different than a formative assessment that I will do you know after the right after the uh, instruction so <clears throat> D depending on the level of class that you're teaching uh, or classes that you're teaching you know uh, it, it's good to get you know to have a, a formative assessment in terms of thumbs up thumbs down hey, how, how are you feeling about knowing this are the practice problems going okay you know looking at their homework really trying to see if the kids are getting it and adjusting your instruction that way um, and then after so many days now personally I like to quiz once a week just to keep it regular and <clears throat> and small so uh, once a week I'll give I'll give kids the quiz and I'll look over them and I'll see you know are they really understanding what you know how to figure out the concentration of a of a solution Do they understand this concept and so you know when they're doing that when they're when when I'm uh, taking that that quiz assessment you know that that's you know different from the formative hopefully the formative is informing you um, or sorry the formative assessment is informing you of whether uh, of whether the summative will go okay you know so when I when I do the quiz you know um, you know they, they should be the students should be able to perform, you know, if they're if everything's going all right with the formative, then they should be able to do fine on on the summative quiz and ultimately the exam. <clears throat> um, so, with that, uh, you know, de developing your assessment, you've really got to look at the two question validity. All right, um, and w w you know, I said this in a in a in a previous video. You know, is it possible that students are going to be able to know the material and not do well on the test? You know, because you don't want that. You don't want to be uh, to be doing that. You want to make sure that your wording is clear and concise and very similar to other questions that you've asked. Um, and they're not going to be confused on wording or format. You know, I've <laughs> I've. I've taught high school for nine years. I've created a lot of stuff in the last, you know, like last minute that morning. I'm printing it off, and this is going to be your quiz. And there's ends up being five typos and having to throw out two questions because I just worded it so poorly that I was like having to having to throw it away. Um, it's unfortunate, but you know, being busy teachers and and doing stuff, you know, that happens sometimes and whatnot, but. You know, ideally, that's not going to happen, okay? And then, certainly, you don't want the kids to um, to uh, be able to do well without knowing the material. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I, I can't think 
of a time when I've asked, <laughs> when I've given a quiz or an assessment where they could have done well without knowing the material. Um, but, you know, cause, cause I really try to make sure that, you know, most people think chemistry is very hard. And so, um, that's, that's usually not a problem for my chemistry classes. And, um, and because I, I really try to pick questions where people have to think and, and give some short answers. Now, um, <laughs> you know, if you have all multiple choice answers and it's like true and false and they're, you know, and they're just getting the look of the draw and those true and false and stuff and then not answering, uh, like short answer questions well, then you know, they're getting an opportunity to do a lot better than what their knowledge base really is. Um, so I would, I do not put true and false questions in my exams. Uh, I, and I, I do put, I do put some multiple choice. Uh, I don't like multiple choice that well, uh, but you can build good multiple choice questions. Uh, it just takes a lot of effort to, to build those good multiple choice questions. And, uh, but that is a video for an, another day um, or another time or discussion for another time because I really don't get into that in um, this first seven weeks of the class. Um, but so, you know, really question that, the, the two question validity, really go through that. And then there are also six facets uh, for understanding. So explain, interpret, apply, shift perspective, show empathy, and demonstrate self-knowledge. So, you know, th those are different ways to try to assess someone of whether they have the knowledge. Some of them are good um, for some topics or concepts and, you know, uh, and some not so good. So, you know, look and see where you can diversify your, your assessments uh, when possible. Because when you are diversifying your assessments, you're going to really have students thinking differently. You know, to show empathy, um, you know, in a in a chemistry uh, in a chemistry question, you know, that could be difficult. You know, I could certainly spin it to to where somebody's talking about something and showing empathy. You know, that might not be an an assessment question like on the the you know, unit exam, but it might be something that I use in a, in a lab report or a worksheet or something. Um, uh, also, you know, a, a lot of these are basic, explain, interpret, apply, um, but shifting perspective, you know, showing empathy and demonstrate self-knowledge, those are a little bit harder and students are going to have to think a little bit differently, especially when you're talking about uh, about science content because uh, from from uh, what I've seen they're typically not asked to do those types of things um, you know I've, I've used that criteria some um, not often though because it is it is a little weird uh, sometimes to come up with those questions and doesn't <laughs> and it doesn't always come up into my head to, to think about those but it's good when you're planning Try to diversify and get those in there uh, when you can. All right. Uh, now, evaluating your assessment. So there are four criteria, you know, impact, content, quality, and process. So impact, how well are their students doing? You know, how are the students impacted by this, uh, by this assessment? Um, content, is there an appropriate breakdown of content questions? Are there appropriate levels of questions used for each level, like Bloom's taxonomy? You really want to make sure that students are having to show you what that they know the stuff that they're supposed to memorize or, or um, show you that skill level stuff. You know, you can create really quality assessments by, uh, by tiering, um, by, by, you know, tiering your assessment. Having, having low level questions and then kind of ratcheting it up more as you go on. Now, if you're gonna have a really uh, heavy um, create 
you know, creative question uh, on an assessment, I strongly suggest that you um, kind of break that down and scaffold it some. Um, <laughs> early on when I was when I was teaching, I would not break that question down. I would have a I would have a really heady um, uh, question that that students would have to think hard and interpret and analyze, and I would not break it down into subcomponents, because in my mind, at that you know first couple of years of me teaching, like if you want those points, you're going to know every aspect of what you need to do. Blah blah blah. I, like I was really kind of a a, a bit too harsh uh, w with that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, guide, the older I've gotten, you know, the more I've taught, I'm like, it's okay to guide the students a little bit, you know, uh, kind of break down the question to show what I'm, you know, to, sh to show the students what I am expecting them to do. Now, I may model that, um, something I might do and, and leave that one question completely open is I might model that as another question in an, uh, as another question and have it broke down. And they have to be able to see that those kind of same components need to be used for that question. So that's a possibility. Um, it depends on what you're teaching and how that how that goes. Um, an assessment doesn't have, you know, when, when I'm saying assessment, you know, it doesn't have to be some unit exam. It could be a lab report, it could be a presentation, it can be whatever you want it to be. It could be that the kids create a model, create a video, of something I've had uh, students do a lot of different things and in fact I have uh, all of my students do a year-long research project uh, where they pick the uh, whatever it is that they're interested in within STEM and they conduct the research they set it out you know I have it broken down um, you know step by step that we do something each week leading up to the point of them you know choosing what they're doing and uh, and evaluating all that um, you know to, to where they are to where they are writing a big you know by the end of the year they're writing a big lab report on what they've done they're they're creating a poster on what they've done and presenting it to the community now um, a lot of that stuff I model within my class with within the normal content of, of what we're doing and they get experience and, and repetition doing that. And so by the time they get to the end of the year and they're showing off that individual research project, they should know what what's expected and, and how to how to go over that. And I don't have to like hold their hand through it because I've modeled it. I'm, you know, I've modeled that for them. Anyway, um, <laughs> so there's also quality. Uh, how well was the level of craftsmanship from the students? So. You know, did they do well? But also, not only just did they do well, but how well did they do it? Did they speak well, um, or or really, you know, was it like you got an A but barely? I could barely understand what you're doing. This doesn't look very good or whatever. So, what is the quality there? And then process. How well did the students follow directions and otherwise perform during the assessment? So, you know, if they're confused a lot and in the wording of something or what have you you know um that's that's not going to be good like you need to have clear wording and, and clear directions for students to follow and, and go through the assessment all right i think that's about it uh for this week this module and you all have a good one bye